Today we're testing a bunch of different dash cams at different price points. In fact, we're testing five because the car itself has its own dash cams. As you can probably tell already from the vision you're seeing, there are different levels of quality exhibited in this test. But I'll show you what they're like on the road because that's where it matters. There are dozens, maybe hundreds of dash cam options out there to choose from. But in this test, we chose four cameras at four different price points, from a very cheap Chinese unit to a high spec system worth 800 bucks. And in an industry first, we also sampled the downloadable dash cam system available in a range of new BMW models. Ours was the new X6. In this test, you'll see us driving on the same roads in the same conditions, and you'll be able to see how each of these dash cams performed. We'll go through the four stick-on systems first, and then check out the downloadable BMW system last. Let's get to it, starting with the cheapest one. The unboxing experience for our cheapest dash cam didn't include, well, a box at all. This camera, which we purchased off Chinese shopping website Wish, arrived unbranded and ambiguous. It was, after all, just $13.30 for the device plus $10 shipping to Australia. Instantly you could tell it was a cheap device, despite its specs looking okay. It was light, it felt more like a toy than an actual dash cam, but it did come with a suction cup, cables and English instructions. Not that they helped that much. This was the least intuitive to use of these camera systems. As you can see from the recording performance of the cheap car camcorder, as it was called, the video quality was terrible. It was pixelated, the recording jumped between scenes, meaning you could miss the crucial moment of impact in the event of an accident. And above all that, it was just hard to figure out how to trigger an event to record when we were setting the camera up. We also shot some footage at night to give you an idea of its performance in the dark, and again, it was disappointing. They say you get what you pay for, and in this instance, you don't get much of a dash cam. It doesn't have GPS mapping to pinpoint an event, for instance, but would you want a $13 dash cam to know everywhere you've been? I don't think I would. The apparently ultra-wide lens was entirely too close up too, and it struggled to capture an entire scenario, easily missing out on what was happening on the periphery. Our advice? Spend more to get a dash cam worth your money. Next most expensive on our list was a device from mainstream brand Navman. The unit we had was at the more affordable end of that brand's scale. The MyView 760 Ultra comes in at $269 retail, but has plenty of big dollar features for the money. There's 4K high-res recording, along with a Sony Lens smartphone connectivity to share files over Wi-Fi, GPS location tagging, speedo readout, headlight reminder, and driver fatigue alerts. And if you hardwire it, it can even work when your car is parked, acting like a sentry. There's a G-sensor and motion sensor to trigger an event in that instance. With its wide view 150 degree quality lens, the Navman hits above its price point in terms of its performance. It recorded cleanly and offered crisp footage that will easily allow you to read number plates or spot traffic lights and signals if you need to. Its operation is simple too. Just hit the blue button and it'll do its thing. And it was better than good at night too, working a treat on a very dark road and also coping well with changing light conditions in tunnels and around town. But its performance in dark back streets was a bit underwhelming. Third on the list was the Uniden iGo Cam 85R, which is sold as a twin camera setup at this price point. To keep things simple, we focused just on the forward view camera for this test. At $349.95 retail, it's an affordable dual camera system, especially considering its specs. It has forward-facing 4K recording, a 2.4-inch screen, GPS tagging, a large speedo display, and like the cheaper Navman unit, it has parking mode as well. 
It doesn't have any of the driver warnings though, and it's a sticker mount system rather than a suction cup, which might be an issue if you change cars with any regularity and want to take your dash cam with you. The unit end system offered decent vision from its camera, but it wasn't quite as good quality or clarity as the cheaper Navman. It dealt well with light changes for the most part, though it was harder to pick up the finer details in the images from its 160 degree wide angle lens. At night was where the unit end performed better, though still not quite as good as the Navman. The camera seemed to round off some of the sharper edges and missed a bit of the detail as a result. Its balance between light and dark was more subtle though. A significant jump up the price scale and we arrived at the Blackview DR900S 2CH. The company claims it's the world's leading dash cam manufacturer and all that in spite of the fact that its flagship offering doesn't even have a screen. But it does have an ultra wide 162 degree angle lens and a rear facing camera with 139 degree angle. Plus it has an over the cloud function that allows you to check on your car and its surroundings at any time using your smartphone. You need to hardwire it to the battery for this capability. There's no denying the quality of the image from the Blackview was impressive. It was crisp and clear during daytime driving, though it did seem to struggle a bit with shadows from buildings and contrast changes at times. It has the widest angle lens of these cameras, and it clearly offered a great view of the car's surroundings. At night, there was still a bit of an issue with contrast pickup of the lens, and it was a bit harder to discern number plates using this camera compared to some of the others. And part of that came down to how good the LED lights were on the BMW we were driving. Last, but certainly not least, was an entire car. It was the BMW X6. Well, that's a little misleading because you can get the BMW Drive Recorder system in models running the BMW Operating System 7.0 with the surround view camera fitted and Parking Assistant Plus fitted. That includes select examples of the 3 Series, the 7 Series, the 8 Series, the X5, X6 and X7. You can choose to subscribe to the service on a monthly basis or download it for a year, for three years, or forever. At that cost, it's pretty affordable technology, but then again, you've got to buy a BMW in the first place. And in terms of tech, it uses the car's parking cameras, which are designed for a specific purpose and therefore don't have the whole dash cam experience in mind. But on the plus side, you're getting footage from the front, the rear and both sides with this system, which is handy to capture evidence of bystanders or witnesses if you need to. As you can see from the footage, it defaults to a quadrant layout, which means you can get a great view of your surroundings. The lenses are somewhat fish-eyed, especially for the side view ones, but the quality isn't too bad. In daytime driving, it maintains an even image quality, which, while not perfect, is definitely going to be usable in the event of a low speed incident. At night, the image quality was good in well-lit urban environments, offering a good glimpse at what was happening around the car. On darker roads, it was fine too, relying heavily on the car's headlights. Having spent a couple of days driving the BMW X6 with all these dash cams hooked up and operating, I can say that there have been a few revelations. For example, I've found that the black view without having anything to really look at is difficult to tell what you're capturing and it really requires you to have that smartphone knowledge and nous in order to take advantage of just how good the camera is because it is really impressive. But you can't see just how good it is while you're driving because there's no display. I've found that using the Navman system has been really easy because it's got a nice quick button for you to hit and it's easy to find. And I also found that the vision of this camera is actually really quite impressive for the price. Plus you get a display that shows you all sorts of different elements to the drive experience including the obvious things like your speed warning and also 
headlight warning when you're going into darker zones. When it comes to the Uniden system, I have to say that the buttons on the back of that device are a little bit more confusing and also it's just not as user-friendly as the Navman system. Plus I've also had a weird satellite glitch with the Uniden model where it decided that I was going up to 900 kilometers an hour, which would have been fun, but it wasn't true. And then there's the Wish camera, the $23 delivered from China unit, which, I mean, if you just want a dash cam, really, that could do what you need it to do. But the resolution of the camera is pretty poor, and also you will find that the lens is too close up in terms of you can't see everything that's happening in front of the car it's quite focused on a very narrow field of view so that isn't perfect and it requires that things maybe be exactly where you need them to be in the event of an accident which i mean isn't always going to be the case and that leaves us with the bmw drive recorder which obviously using four cameras is going to be better than using one or two and it does offer you that peace of mind of being able to capture what's happening on the side of the car as well as the front and the rear. And it is a really impressive addition to BMW's range. I applaud BMW for offering such technology in different models. And it's just a matter of time before we see more and more dash cams go on board in cars. So if you do happen to buy a BMW, then I would thoroughly recommend if it's capable of doing it, to get the drive recorder system. But tell us what you think in the comments section below. Would you choose a cheap dash cam or would you be more tempted to fork out a little bit more and get one that has better resolution and maybe better usability? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget, hit subscribe, hit like, share this with your friends, and also hit the bell notification icon to stay up to date with all our latest videos.